So, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, so, today our uh, on our CPD, uh, our topic is hypertensive urgency and emergency. So, uh, the content of presentation are we will briefly review the blood pressure and we will review uh, the blood pressure regulation so that it will be easy for us to understand the uh, pathophysiology and management of the uh, regulation of the blood pressure, how to manage it and uh, it's just basic. So, after the review of the blood pressure and uh, blood pressure regulation, uh, we'll go towards the hypertensive urgency and uh, hypertensive emergency. So, today we'll only discuss about uh, hypertensive urgency. So, in the next uh, CPD, we'll discuss about hypertensive emergency. So, now let us discuss about uh, briefly about the blood pressure. So, as we all know, uh, the blood pressure is the um, multiple of cardiac output and uh, peripheral resistance. That means the blood pressure is directly proportional to the uh, cardiac output and uh, peripheral vascular resistance. So the factors which uh, increases the cardiac output and uh, peripheral resistance will ultimately increase uh, the blood pressure. That means uh, increase in uh, blood volume uh, which will be uh, done by the sodium mineral corticoids and arterial natriuretic peptide and various cardiac factors like increasing heart rate and increasing uh, contractility will ultimately increase the cardiac output and it will increase the blood pressure. So similarly various humoral factors uh, and uh, neural factors and local factors uh, that increases the peripheral uh, resistance will ultimately uh, increases the blood pressure. So. Um, during the management also if we manipulate this uh, uh, cardiac output uh, peripheral resistant um, by increasing the cardiac output or decreasing cardiac output or uh, peripheral resistant we can ultimately increase or decrease the uh, blood pressure so now let us discuss about the uh, discuss in brief about the blood pressure regulation so it's all basic so the normotensive level of our blood pressure is uh, tightly regulated um, by the various um, organs like uh, kidneys, uh, liver, um, also lungs and adrenal glands. It is called the renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism. So, first of all, uh, let us discuss like this. Uh, so, uh, if we have the decrease in blood pressure, uh, so the low blood pressure um, will be uh, received by the renal artery and the renal pressure uh, renal pressure in the kidney will be decreased so ultimately the kidney will uh, secrete a renin and from the liver there is the secretion of the angiotensin so that angiotensin will be converted converted to angiotensin 1 by the renin which is secreted by the kidney and uh, many endothelium tissues will be secreting the angiotensin converting enzyme and that angiotensin 1 will be converted to angiotensin 2 by the uh, angiotensin converted enzyme and angiotensin 2 uh, will act by two ways like it will directly vasoconstrict uh, the uh, it will directly act by the vasoconstriction which will directly uh, increases the blood pressure because we know that vasoconstriction will increase the peripheral vascular resistance and also um, the angiotensin 2 will act upon the adrenal gland and from the adrenal gland after the action of the angiotensin 2 it will secrete the aldosterone so the ultimate action of the aldosterone is the reabsorption of the sodium and water so it will ultimately increase the blood volume because of reabsorption of the sodium water and it will increase the blood volume so after increasing the blood volume the cardiac output will increase and ultimately they will increase in blood pressure so this is how the blood pressure will be increased if there is decrease in blood pressure so, uh, if there is increase in blood pressure severely, so let's say, so uh, there are cardiac volume sensors. Uh, so from that, uh, there will be secretion of the atrial natriuretic peptide, which will leads to vasodilatation. Also, uh, from the kidney, uh, there will be excretion of the sodium and water because the uh, because the renal artery uh, renal because of the less work of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system because if there is increase in blood pressure there will be less secretion of the renin and there will be 
um, less secretion of the sodium and water and which will leads to uh, more excretion of the sodium and water which will ultimately decrease the uh, blood volume. So this how the uh, this is how the renin angiotensin always works. So now let us discuss about and let us go towards the hypertensive urgency. So in today's uh, presentation, uh, we'll discuss about hypertensive urgency and in the next we'll discuss about the hypertensive emergency. So the goal of our presentation today will be uh, to review the presentation of the hypertensive urgency, to summarize the treatment and explain the modalities to improve the care coordination among the interprofessional team members. So in order to improve outcomes for patients affected by the hypertensive urgency. So what is hypertensive urgency then? So it is a marked elevation of the blood pressure without evidence of the target organ damage. So how can we appreciate the target organ damage? Uh, so if there is the evidence of the target organ damage, then we can see pulmonary edema, cardiac ischemia, there could be the neurological deficit, or there could be the acute renal failure. If those features are not present, then we can say there is no target organ damage. So uh, in hypertensive urgency, there will be no evidence of the target organ damage. So what are the causes? What is the etiology of the hypertensive urgency? So if person uh, previously is having hypertensive therapy and there is non-compliance -compli with the anti-hypertensive therapy, so use of sympathomimetic, if there is thyroid dysfunction, usually the uh, hyperthyroidism will cause, cause the hyper um, hypertensive urgency, anxiety, pain, um, um, causes acute elevation but uh, this anxiety and pain will require uh, different treatment modality rather than the anti-hypertensive medication. So we will also, we, we'll also have to rule out if there is falsely elevated blood pressure. So if we have to make sure that our instrument are working properly. So what is uh, pseudo-hypertension? Uh, so there is a term pseudo-hypertension, it is the falsely elevated blood pressure reading due to sclerotic or calcified arteries that do not collapse during inflation of the blood pressure cuff. So it could be another possible cause of elevated blood pressure reading. So now let us discuss about the epidemiology of hypertensive urgency. Uh, so the prevalence of the hypertension worldwide is around 31%. So that means 1.3 billion people are affected uh, by the hypertension. So among these, uh, one to two percent will suffer from hypertensive crisis in their lifespan. That uh, that encompasses both hypertensive urgency and emergency. So mainly the risk factor uh, are obesity, uh, mainly the uh, uh, female gender, history of the cardiovascular disease, uh, diabetes, smoking, and non-compliance with the uh, antihypertensive. These are the risk factor of the hypertension. Uh, but the hypertensive urgency and hypertensive crisis, uh, males are more likely to suffer uh, than the females. So now let us uh, go towards the history and physical examination. How should we approach a person if he or she is presented with the hypertensive crisis, uh, elevated blood pressure? So the history and physical examination for the patient with markedly elevated blood pressure should be uh, focused with the revolving around the if there are um, signs of the uh, target organ damage or in organ damage. So this could include uh, severe headache, dizziness, uh, shortness of breath, uh, chest pain, vomiting or change in the vision. So from we start the physical ex examination by accurately measuring the uh, blood pressure. So uh, we should measure the blood pressure by lying in a standing position and we should take the blood pressure in bilateral arms. So we should also see the if there is impending sign of heart failure such as elevated jugular venous distension, if there are rails on long auscultation, if there are gallop on hot auscultation. So detailed neurological examination should be done. So we should see detailly about various cerebral uh, testing. Uh, so we should rule out if there is a nervous impairment also. Fondoscopy should be done uh, if there is present uh, to rule out if there is papilloedema. Uh, so um, if we see there is papilloedema, then our antihypertensive treatment should be more aggressive. So basically the history should revolve around the presence of inorgan damage. Um, uh, because in the emergency, all detail history, other history may not be significant. So we should also 
rule out the past history like if the person have pre-existing hypertension if uh, the person is taking their uh, hypertensive medications uh, properly uh, or uh, so we will also have to know the compliance of the anti-hypertensive medication so any other medication that increases the hypertension if the person is taking that medication or not so basically all those things we should rule out and uh, for the woman we should uh, we should know the last menstrual period it is important if the woman is pregnant then the treatment should be done another way i'll discuss that in treatment part so in the laboratory evaluation our goal is to rule out the target organ damage and uh, various lab testing should be done it includes the metabolic panels urine analysis electrocardiogram chest x-ray and uh, uh, ct scan of brain so electrolyte levels, blood urea nitrogen, creatinine level levels, uh, we should do to assess the renal person if the uh, renal function if the person is having um, AKI, acute kidney injury or not. So complete blood count should be done and peripheral blood smear should be done to rule out microangiopathic anemia. So uh, pregnancy test should be done, toxicology screen should be done, and endocrine uh, should uh, testing should be done if there is indication so imaging um, should be guided by the clinical presentation like if there is impending site of heart failure or if there is uh, pulmonary features are present then chest radiography uh, or electrocardiography you can do and a patient with the neurological uh, abnormality should be initial assist initially with head ct scan and further imaging should be guided by the clinical presentation so um, what are the patient they are with high risks the patient with high risks are uh, that may go towards the in organ damage more rapidly than the normal uh, normal patient like if the person has pre-existing chronic uh, pre-existing congestive heart failure or the patient has chronic kidney disease uh, chronic artery disease or history of stroke so those patient are more uh, prone to uh, go towards the uh, in organ damage so um, we should rule out the in-organ damage with the person having history of this uh, risk. Now, in the pregnancy, uh, the pregnant uh, patient with elevated blood pressure will require extra caution. So, in this patient, especially in the absence of pre-existing hypertension, uh, preeclampsia can occur. Uh, so, uh, we see the preeclampsia in the hypertensive emergency in the uh, pass, uh, in the woman who is more pregnant so this type of uh, patient may not have the uh, hypertensive history in the past so uh, if the patient complex uh, potentially worries some symptoms such as uh, the, if the patient uh, the pregnant woman have the headache vision change or abdominal pain so um, we should always obtain the complete blood count hepatic function and the lactate dehydrogenase test now let us uh, move towards the uh, treatment or management of the hypertensive urgency. So we have to know that um, at least one incident of increase in blood pressure occurs in about 3 to 15 percent of the adult during their attendance in emergency department. That means even if the person doesn't have the um, uh, hypertensive history, elevated blood pressure history, or if we simply uh, go towards the emergency department uh, for simply headache, uh, the the person, the adult can have the increase in uh, blood pressure level, maybe due to fear or anxiety or any other thing. So we should always focus on focused uh, on the disease rather than the number of hypertensive patient. So mainly the patient present to emergency department with high blood pressure. Uh, so we have to know that only small percentage of the patient will ac ac actually require the emergency treatment. So what are our goals? Uh, what are our general consideration uh, for uh, hypertensive urgency? The treatment for hypertensive urgency is to ensure better long-term blood pressure control. 
So the patient without symptom or sign of target organ damage have not shown benefit from aggressive hypertensive therapy in the acute setting. And we have to know that rapid lowering of the blood pressure in this patient. That means uh, those who doesn't have the targeted organ damage and only have elevated blood pressure that have no benefit and carries it carries the theoretical risks of causing relative hypotension and end organ hyperperfusion. So especially in those who have the long standing severely elevated blood pressure. So we should always um, be very cautious to the patient who have only elevated blood pressure and have the long history of the hypertension and who doesn't have the uh, evidence of the end organ damage. So we should always avoid uh, to lower um, the uh, lower the blood pressure rapidly uh, to uh, to cause the in organ hyperperfusion. So so it is beneficial to start this patient on oral antihypertensive with the goal of lowering the blood pressure slowly over 24 to 48 hours. So there is little data that directly addressed what specific agent is ideal in this situation. But more importantly, there should be the close follow-up within a week with the primary care and the care provider uh, should be scheduled to ensure improvement in blood pressure control and initiate or try to medication as needed. So in case of the pregnant woman, um, severe elevation in blood pressure of the pregnant woman uh, should manage immediately to prevent the inorgan damage. So women with pre-existing hypertension who became pregnant or intended to beca become pregnant must be uh, transitioned to nifedipine, methyl dopa or labetalol during the course of pregnancy. So uh, we should know that the pregnant woman should not be given um, ACEs inhibitors, angiotensin receptor blockers and direct renin inhibitors. Now let us go towards the uh, pharmacotherapy. So the sodium nitroprusside, uh, let us first take, talk about sodium nitroprusside. So the optimal pharmacotherapy is relied upon the particular organ at risk. So in the patient with hypertensive crisis, anti-hypertensive medication has been observed to be effective in acutely reducing blood pressure. So sodium nitroprusside is commonly pre prescribed medication and it is short acting and it is treated minute to minute as per response. So, but the patient should be on constant monitoring in the ICO or... Let me interrupt. Yeah. That's more for a hypertensive emergency though. We just mentioned hypertensive urgency, you're not going to be aggressive with your lowering over 24 to 48 hours. There's no point in even thinking ICU and ICU monitoring and, uh, and sodium nitroprusside unless it's more emergency type. So. Um, so. Yeah. So, uh, so the lobetalol. So lobetalol is an alpha and beta blocker that shows very beneficial in many ma management of the hypertensive crisis. So it is uh, preferred in acute uh, dissection and in organ renal diseases. So uh, the patient have hypertensive urgency with in organ renal disease, we can use safely this labetalol. So 10 to 20 mg boluses may be administered or it may be given an IV infusion at 1 mg per minute until the desired blood pressure is achieved. So phenyl dopam is a peripheral dopamine receptor agonist and it is given an IV dose of uh, 0 0.1 microgram per kg per minute and it, it is to be tritated every 15 minutes. So clavidipine is a dihydropyridine calcium channel blocker uh, that is admi administered intravenously for rapid and precise blood pressure reduction. So initial IV infusion of clavidipine is uh, given at 1 to 2 mg per hour to be tritated according to the response. Now let us move towards the differential diagnosis of the elevated blood pressure, um, hypertensive urgency. So it could be anxiety disorder, apnea, cocaine related cardiac myopathy, heart failure, hyperthyroidism, hypertopic cardiomyopathy, myocardial infarction, primary aldosteronism, hemorrhagic stroke or ischemic stroke. So to see the prognosis, the one year mortality for those experiencing an episode of hypertensive urgency is X. 
urgency is approximately 9% and if that is untreated so it will lead to significant morbidity and mortality so one of the study that is done in 670 adults so those who have severely raised blood pressure showed that 57 almost 57 percent suffer from the hypertensive emergencies and 98 percent of the patient with hypertensive emergency and 23 to per 23 uh, percent of the patient with hyper hypertensive urgency were hospitalized and among them uh, those who have neurovascular emergencies where medium survival rate were like 14 days and who have cardiovascular emergencies uh, so the survival uh, days were like uh, 50 days what are the various complications uh, the various complication uh, would be like myocardial infarction stroke heart failure uh, renal failure hypertensive retinopathy uh, there could be dementia or aneurysms so how can we uh, like explain to the patient like we should uh, say that we should reduce the salt intake avoid alcohol take plenty of fiber exercise regularly avoid the caffeinated drink we should quit uh, smoking and if the patient is obese then we should uh, reduce the weight so the the points to note down uh, in hypertensive urgency are so the hypertensive urgency is an acute severe elevation in the blood pressure without sign or symptom of uh, in organ damage so there is no any association with short term morbidity and mortality but it is not uh, treated properly and hypertensive urgency is occurring more frequently there, there could be the long term uh, morbidity, morbidity and it may usually lead to mortality. So the focus should be on the symptom of the inorgan damage if present. Uh, so it includes the chest pain, shortness of breath, headache, neurological deficit and vision change. So we should be always cautious to the pregnant open. Um, Preeclampsia can ensue at lower blood pressure level than expected in other hypertensive emergency and we should always treat the patient not the number and rapidly bringing down the blood pressure in a patient without in organ damage may result in relative hypoperfusion and the harm uh, can harm the patient rather than to help so for enhancing healthcare team and outcomes so there will be multidisciplinary approach the patient with hypertensive urgency are best managed by if the resources are available by an interprofessional team of cardiologist, internist, nephrologist, uh, specialty cardiac nurses and ophthalmologists. So the key is to educate the patient on uh, medication compliance and the anti-hypertensive uh, medication should be given and our goal for the uh, decreasing the blood pressure should be within the 24 to uh, 48 hours and the primary care providers and nurse practitioners should educate the patient on changing the lifestyles of the patient as discussed earlier so our next presentation will be on hypertensive emergency thank you